going to cover two tracks today uh, out of the five tracks that are there in the HL7 India uh, Fire Connectathon. The track names are uh, Fire Starter Track and V22 Fire Track. We have with us uh, the track leads uh, from the tracks who will uh, talk to us about the tracks themselves and uh, give us more information about the tracks. So hold on your questions, put it in the chat, and when the time comes, we will uh, uh, ask those questions to the panelist. So with this, I introduce the panel for the discussion today. Uh, Aditya Joshi. Aditya Joshi has 11 years of experience in healthcare IT with extensive work done on HL7 and FIRE. Uh, he is a senior tutor at HL7.org and he is a member of EAC at HL7 International. He is also the chair education committee at HL7 India. He is an HL7 SME and a trainer at Kurizent Private Limited. So Aditya Joshi is a well-known name uh, in the training circles on HL7 and FIRE. Our next panelist is uh, uh, Mr. Vaku uh, Jos Chetalan. He is a member of HL7 India Technical Committee and uh, a product manager at Philips. He has uh, 20 years of experience in healthcare, cloud solutions, and embedded software, with the last four years working extensively in fire and interoperability area. These two gentlemen uh, are the track leads for the fire starter track. Next, uh, we introduce uh, Mr. Amit Palaria. Amit Palaria is the integration manager at 314E Corporation. He has about 10 years of experience in healthcare interoperability domain. First, uh, working for a major EMR vendor in the US and then consulting in the various clients across US. He ha also has a PhD degree uh, from Prudhoon University. Uh, welcome, Amrit. And uh, the last panelist uh, that I want to introduce is uh, Mr. Ravi Atmanathan. Ravi is a product architect at Philips IntelliBridge Enterprise uh, uh, Solution at Philips. He has 14 years of experience in healthcare interoperability. He has worked extensively in the last four years on HL7 V2 to fire conversion from STU2 to R4 versions. So he has extensive knowledge and hands-on experience on V2 to fire conversions and uh, fire to V2 conversions. So welcome all, uh, welcome uh, panelists. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar today. Uh, with this, I hand over uh, uh, the mic to Aditya. Uh, Aditya, if you can walk us over to through the fire starter track. Uh, that will be great. Sure, Satyam. Uh, thank you so much, Satyam, and welcome everyone for uh, today's session. Uh, before we begin, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, session is more about making you aware uh, related about the two tracks. Uh, one is fire starter track, another is V22 fire track. Um, so we'll walk you through what is going to be there in the uh, in each of the tracks. What what you can learn over there. What you can take. Uh, what what would be the outcomes, objectives, and how we will do and what we will do over the tracks. So this will give you a, a good perspective and give you a good idea about each of the tracks, and you can prepare yourself uh, to join these tracks. On that note, let me start uh, on HLC India Fire Connectathon Fire Starter Track. So this is the, about the fire starter track. The uh, a very famous quote is mentioned here, and that's what our intent is. This tell me, I forget, teach me, I may remember, involve me, and I learn. And this is what we are going to focus. That is involve me and I learn. So this is more of learning by doing. There will be you can say practical hands-on things which you will be doing for almost two days, and you will in the process itself you will learn a lot. Okay, it's uh, not like a formal training, but doing by doing a lot of exercises by going through the fire specifications, you will find that you have gained a lot of knowledge on this particular uh, uh, through this track. Okay, on the fire specification, and that is where the very important part we have mentioned is no prior knowledge. 
see the whole point of having this track is for the starters so even if you have no idea about fire that's per perfectly fine we are there uh, to tell you what is fire and while you are doing or solving the use cases or assignments gradually you will understand more about the fire okay the intent is to tell you about entire fire ecosystem that is like the meaning of rest api or the meaning of fire resources or what is server client so basically touching upon the ecosystem and we will be using latest fire version which is r4 as of now that's the latest version so what you can really learn from this entire track <clears throat> you can get the entire fire understanding that is what is the fire how we go to the fire specification what is the concept of resources what is the concept of rest api and most importantly what we have come up is there are workflows there are some scenarios we have designed specifically to teach you that how fire can solve your interoperability scenarios interoperability workflows okay so uh, doing those various scenarios so it's a story and going through that entire story going through that entire workflow you will understand and you can correlate and this is going to be very interesting and good learning point even for people who say that i'm a clinical person or business analyst or maybe a testing person who i mean maybe you are not going to write the code that's okay that's perfectly fine with every standard there we always need people who are functional as well as technical so it doesn't matter you are a functional person or technical person still you can jump on this track and you can get your hands dirty and you can try to learn things so by solving those workflows you will have more idea about how fire resources can be utilized what resources can be utilized for what various different purposes okay and that would be something which is going to be interesting for all of all the audience who can join literally anyone there is nothing like oh, i can join or you can join anyone either you are a technical person functional person even clinical person even if you think that i am a doctor i am a uh, purely clinical person can i still jump yes definitely and you will learn on this particular track okay so that's a basic idea about fire starter track what we are going to do in this track so this is a summary uh, we encourage you to go to conference and read more about it uh we will be continuously updating the confluence pages so we encourage everyone to uh go and basically go through the tracks uh go through each of the tracks and understand what each of the tracks is going to offer you what we are going to offer here is we will start with fire in action right away so understand this is not like we are uh, spoon feeding you or teaching your friend you are going to learn but by doing the things by yourself okay so uh here what how it's going to work is basically you will have uh, you will start directly with working with patient resources and we will directly give you the use cases where you have to work with patient resource using fire rest api you have to get the data uh, from the servers and you have to basically play along with those things play along with the patient resource using fire rest api okay and then we will jump to uh, next thing where we will talk about fire ecosystem we will talk about resources and this is going to be very very useful thing uh, to anyone anyone who wants to learn fire uh, the most basic concept you can really learn in fire is resources so that's where we will make you we will introduce you to the resources concept what are the resources intent is not to basically teach you everything about the resource but intent is to make you aware the concept of resource and what resources are there so that next time you can yourself jump into the specification and try to figure out which resource will help you and how to work on any particular resource and here you will have a quiz also then we will also do a deep dive on extension framework we will talk about constraining the resources and more about constraining uh, the whole concept of constraining is profiling that's all something you can learn there uh, in profiling track um then you will have we will talk about various you can say resource groups so in an all basically you can say the most fundamental thing in resourcing we will touch upon that is resources and the fire rest api and these are the various scenarios through these scenarios we will try to teach you or we will try to um, uh, you will experience how fire is solving various health interoperability scenarios okay how fire is solving a uh, use case for scheduling or patient registration to the claims and then there is some advanced topics and a little introduction on smart on fire so that's pretty much we will do on this particular track uh if you have any queries you can always reach out to um technical chair that is kumar satyam on this email id if you have any issue, uh, queries or specific uh, you can say 
uh, if you want to know more about fire starter track you can always write back to us uh, to waku or to me uh, and we will help you definitely to understand more about it but yeah in nutshell it's more about uh, learning by doing so we will do a lot of hands on thing the entire two days will have small sessions also like some sessions regarding where uh, uh, where people will talk about some specific use cases uh, or maybe how to write a rest client using dotnet api so some technical or some different sessions would be there but pretty much it is open to everyone if you have not worked on fire ever that's completely fine we are there to tell you how to jump or how to swim in the fire specification starting from resource to rest api and solving various use cases and understanding how fire can really help in your um uh, help in in, in your um, uh, this case uh, solving the healthcare interoperability scenarios okay so thank i can you. see thank that, you aditya yeah, yeah I thank you aditya that, for the introduction yeah yeah uh, so i have a question and uh, this question is about like what is the idea behind this uh, track and why this track came into being for this uh, uh, this event so if vaku if you can add your thoughts to this it will be great aditya did explain that we did we do not have any prior experience uh, in entering this track but what i want to share over here is a lot of us who knows or her hear about fire a lot but we, we really have not uh, touched and seen what exactly it is so this is this is uh, this is where you can actually experience how it is about working with fire without much prior not uh, prior knowledge over here so we will we will make sure everybody who is in this track gets uh, gets a real experience of how to how to query a fire server how to pull data and again remember that uh, this is for everybody this is not some this is not for somebody who is working in fire uh, he can always join but no prior knowledge is required and end of the session we expect uh, the participant to go with a clear ecosystem knowledge of what is in fire and how it has been used by the industry uh, thank you vaku uh, so thanks for the great introduction uh, one question that comes to the mind is uh, what would a marketing or an executive get out of this track i understand it's good for developers but can you explain how it is beneficial for the other participants that have been mentioned here so what's the thought process behind the the very um, aditya may i take this sure sure yeah so the very intent of this track also uh, satyam the question resonates the intent of the track because um, in industry we have this buzzword and we know that uh, all all healthcare is moving towards standardization and fire is something which has been picked up so everybody needs to speak the same language if i may say it would be fire in lots of conversations so this helps anybody be it a physician uh, be it a, a marketer who wants to be in the space and to understand the interoperability landscape and this is a place where they can be um, we will walk them through the complete ecosystem of how it has been used how it is seen from a physician's point of view how it is seen by uh, uh, from a from a developer point of view so all of it is something which we are trying to back uh, in this so uh, i feel um, regardless of uh, you know uh, the role which you are playing if you are in healthcare and want to uh, create an app or uh, you know want to communicate in in this fire ecosystem this is a place for you and uh, you will go back with that minimum knowledge and uh, you know the depth of it is which is left to all of us to to go and explore uh, so yes marketer also will benefit from this session thank you vaku so aditya uh, you mentioned that this track is for anyone without prior knowledge uh, what if somebody who has read about fire and who understands and who has attended some sessions on fire will this track be useful to them oh definitely definitely surely i tell you why because even if you know a uh, fire a little bit let's say you have understood you have read about fire and you have a little idea about resources the workflows will take you to many resources and it will tell you how you are solving various interoperability scenarios using these resources 
like a scheduling a visit. So even if you have worked on fire, probably you might not have touched upon the resources related to solving appointment scheduling using fire. So this will give them a broader perspective. And even like Vaku mentioned, even if you are from a director level, executive level, or engineering lead, one thing, very first thing you guys have to do on fire is you have to understand how which resources I will use and how using what resources will solve the entire scenario. And all these things are hands-on. So we will give the REST APIs. People will have to create the REST APIs and queries to complete these scenarios. So if you have heard about it, read a basic about it, or if you have gone through some basic training, like if you have gone through a basic five fundamental concepts are clear, still this will give you a lot more knowledge. This is again learning by doing, so there is a lot of doing involved. So even if you have basic idea, still uh, this track will help you to understand more about fire. Uh, thanks, Aritya. A follow-up question. You said learning by doing. Uh, that Mm -hmm. tells me that there would be a lot of uh, preparation that I would need to do to join the track. Uh, are there some uh, pre-reads or uh, tools that I need to know before joining the track or everything will be covered on the day of the event? A great point, Satyam. So only thing uh, which we have also mentioned on the conference, the only thing we would need from participant is they should have a Postman REST client downloaded on their systems. And uh, as we will have, we will also going to have pre connectathon sessions for the people who have registered. Uh, so for those people, we will have some sessions arranged even before the actual event date, where we will tell them how you basically use Postman for Fire REST API. So some uh, recorded sessions, some pre connectathon sessions would be conducted for registered, uh, registered participants in order to make them aware about the prerequisites so that on day of event, they are ready with all the prerequisites. But there are no Thanks, other sir. prerequisites. Yeah, go ahead, complete, please. Yeah, and thank you, Aditya. Uh, so if I can summarize, uh, this track is for anyone who wants to get onto FIRE and uh, it's not a training as such, but it's a learning by doing a session, right? And uh, yeah. anyone who gets in here gets a practical hands-on experience on what fire actually is. Theory will be less, but more it will be like looking at it, doing it, learning it. And uh, will there be some kind of uh, apps that people can uh, look at or play around with a fire server? Will that be also in the scope? Baku, would you like to answer? Yes. Um, so um, thanks for consolidating that, um, uh, Satyam. So in other words, if you notice the sequence when we started, we start straight away by getting hands dirty. We are in the first session. Uh, straight away, we are getting into, you know, uh, doing a query, getting a resource. Now to your question, whether there will be an app, uh, the intent is to have all the required items which you would need uh, to make these calls into the fire system. So you will you will go with a, a set of you know postman collection which will have all the required details uh, to uh, you know to implement or integrate into your uh, into your web application uh, we also have something on uh, smart on fire which will give you a very high level introduction of how we can do it so most of it um, end of the session um, all the participants will have their own postman collection which can be straight away used within their web applications. Over to you, Satya. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vaku. Thank you, Aditya. A last question before we move on to the next track. Uh, will this uh, experience help me in uh, doing uh, fire uh, related stuff at my office? And will it help me prepare for the certification? Uh, definitely, definitely for the first part. I mean, for uh, the first part, definitely uh, it will help immensely uh, because it, in just two days, you get a good idea about entire fire uh, specification and the REST APIs. Uh, and this is uh, for certification thing. Certification needs a lot of learning. And for that, someone would have to go, you can say more rigorous training or more rigorous study. So this is going to be your stepping stone, or you can say you are taking your first step towards learning fire and building your knowledge around fire. 
and uh, there would be a lot more steps need to be taken for certification on practical side definitely it will help even even for physician or a, or a developer or anyone they will understand that okay there are so many resources and how to use resource for exchanging various type of data so that's the most fundamental thing which one should know about fire and that's one important thing we will take from the uh, from this particular track uh, thanks aditya and thanks vaku for uh, this fantastic overview of uh, the fire starter track now we move on to the next track welcome everyone uh, so um ravi and i are going to talk about the ho7 v2 fire track uh, in this upcoming connectathon and um before we actually get into the particulars of what we will be doing in this track i just wanted to i don't know what kind of audience is listening in so i'm just going to go very briefly over what v2 is for fire is why we need to convert from v2 to fire and what that entails and then we can talk about in particular what you're going to get out of this uh, track so um so let's get started so we um i think again if those of you who work in the interoperability domain would know that v2 is an old standard that has been around for decades um and it's um it has a very basic data structure that is currently but it's the standard that's most heavily employed by ehr vendors today uh, across the world i would say and uh, fire is a very new standard developed in just the last decade and um it it uses the latest developments in technology and exchange mechanisms it has a sophisticated data structure and it's also geared towards fast implementation and fast exchange so it's today being employed heavily by apps but it's not that popular yet in the ehr uh, among the ehr vendors but it is expected to grow so since all the existing interfaces today are using v2 um there is an obvious uh, need for uh, especially among the vendors to say is there a way to go directly from v2 to fire instead of them having to rewrite their whole database um so the question is fine we're saying we we'll go from v2 to fire but what will it require right what is it going to involve so this is just a schema showing you what it means to go from v2 to fire so let's say we have different message types in v2 and then we have what we call resources in fire so what we are going to do is we have data elements in v2 messages that we are going to figure out where they need to go in the fire resources and to which data element in fire so that's basically what we mean when we say we are going to do v2 to fire mapping and this is just showing i think most of the people who have worked again in the integration domain would know what a v2 message looks like and fire resources look more like um well this one is showing json structure you can also have xml structure but they are either json xml or rdf so um again this is showing that you have an adt message in v2 you have to figure out where this message the data in this message needs to fall in a in the fire resources and in this particular example you're seeing that one adt message needs some of the data is going to go into the patient resource and some is going to go into the encounter resource so so that's the background so that's what this track is about it's about this these mappings from v2 data to fire data so what are we going to accomplish in this track what are we trying to do here um so the ho7 community has been working on developing some standard mappings from between v2 and fire and um those mappings are available they are not fully developed they are still a work in progress but they they are already there so one of the uh, contributions that we can make and especially if we are from the integration domain and have experience with v2 what we can do is we can take um those mappings go from v2 messages to fire sources and test them out and see if those mappings really work and do they work for all the different use cases that are possible out there for example if it's a results message can we go we can we do just a lab result translation can we also do a micro Uh, biology message result translation using the same mappings right so that's basically so we are trying to figure out some standard mappings that will work across use cases so so we so in this track by 
participating in this track, the participants get to contribute to the community, to the general, to the broad fire community by testing all those standard mappings that are already out there. Um, and beyond that, they, you know, we can use for these for this testing. Uh, the participants can use sample messages, or they can actually have their own real messages from their workplace. Perhaps that they can test these mappings on, and then they can say, um, and then they can report on the outcomes. So that's one of the objectives here. The other objective also is, so as I said, this mappings is still a work in progress. If somebody has interest, say, for doing a mapping for document, and it's not there. Uh, say a PDF document mapping, let's say, is not there, then and they want to develop mapping for that. I think we are welcome to work on that you know, via this track as well. So, so it's again a, a great opportunity to contribute by adding to those mappings that are out there. Great. So, what is it going? What is going to be in this track? What are the participants of this track going to get out of it? I think we have already heard about the best way to learn is by doing. So even if you're new to FIRE, um, by, uh, most of you would know uh, the V2. So if you know V2 and you understand V2, but you don't understand FIRE, if you, when you see this uh, translation happening between V2 and FIRE, that's going to help you understand FIRE better. So, so that's definitely, so if you're a learner, definitely helps you. And as I already mentioned, if you are going to um, participate in the track, you are going to contribute to the FIRE community. And FIRE is actually based on community. So it's a, it's a very important part of, of the FIRE standard. The, obviously, the third, because this is a meeting, this is a, a, a connecting event, you also get to collaborate with your counterpart in other organizations. All right, so let's say, I, Let's say you like all whatever I've said until now. Now the next question is, can you uh, can you join this track? You don't know fire, right? So you don't know anything about fire. Maybe you know just you've heard about fire. You know it's the upcoming great thing. It's the uh, next big thing. But you don't you have never really worked with it. So can you still join this track? Yes, you can. Um, so we've actually started this process with some of the participants who are new to this uh, uh, to fire. And we have about two weeks to get you up to speed. Um, so we're not saying we're going to teach you whole fire, the whole gamut of it, but we'll get you ready for the track. So you'll still be able to contribute even if you know nothing about fire. And obviously by the end of the track, you will um, have some, you will have a good amount of knowledge about fire because of the work that you did. And then um, the other question that might pop up among some participants is, well, I'm good at functional and data analysis, but I'm not that good at programming because not everybody is a programmer. And there are also people who are programmers, but not so good um, with healthcare data. So either way, though this only talks about people who are, either way, this, this track will be a great, um, great track for you to join. And uh, because as I said, we are going to talk about mapping. We're going to talk about mappings between data and that does not require programming. Now you do need some way to go from uh, from the mappings, uh, from the mappings to the actual resource, to the actual fire um, structure. And for that, we'll be using a code. So we are also going to show about that, uh, show in this track. So I'm going to uh, pass on to Ravi, who can talk more about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, go ahead, Ravi. Yeah. So now we have decided to move from, uh, uh, we want to go from B2 to fire. So you need some infrastructure for that. Uh, in the rare case that you don't have access to the infrastructure, we have some uh, webinars uh, going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks, which will help you to set up this infrastructure. So what we are looking at is uh, primarily, we are looking at, uh, uh, you need to have access to an Hazel 7 fire editor. So you can easily edit the messages and pass it to the broker and actually view the output of the message uh, very easily. Uh, you need access to a broker. And if, even if you don't have access to a broker, we will come up with a, um, uh, with a sample broker which you can use uh, for this exercise. 
uh, we'll also go through how the uh, internals works a little bit uh, as far as week to do fire mapping is concerned to help you to understand to get you some background behind the design of the solution and finally once you get the fire message you definitely need to post to the fire server uh, there are standard open fire servers available so either we can use that or we can also help you to install your own set of fire server so that's it from our end Uh, thank you, Ravi. Thank you, Amrit, for this fantastic introduction to V2 to Fire. And you also did cover like who should join and what is the prerequisites required, right? So uh, one question: It looks very technical. This track is, it looks very technical, and it's uh, what is there a scope for domain guys, the functional experts who are very good at uh, the domain, to participate? Is there a way they can contribute? Absolutely. So, um, like I said, um, though there's a technical aspect to it because there is, and, and obviously people who are programmers are welcome to join because they will actually get to learn how to um, play with this code that Ravi just talked about. But the um, the the primary focus of this track is to work with the mappings, and those mappings really people who understand health data well can really help a lot with those mappings. Um, and it really um, does not need any uh, programming or any kind of technical uh, knowledge in terms of uh, in terms of the technology. Um, they'll just need, of course, and so people who are functional and who have good understanding of healthcare, and uh, they can do a good data analysis. They can understand which data needs to go where. I, I think that they, this is a very good track for them. In fact, um, they can contribute a lot. Ravi. I think it's uh, pretty much covered. So also when we set up the environment, uh, so we'll make sure that you understand how to do the mappings. Uh, so the focus is more on the mapping itself rather than on the underlying technology. But you'll get some insights into what is going behind the scenes. Uh, thank you, Amrit and Ravi. So is it all only about mappings or do we get to see some tools uh, that are actually doing this or are there any tools which are doing this today so you want to take the one yeah so there is no automated mechanism through which we can generate this mappings um, so one of the bonus track uh, we are going to focus on is uh, how if somebody can give uh, let's say a head sound work group comes up with the mapping between v2 to fire and they give it in form of a configuration can we take that configuration convert it to a mapping uh, through programmatically and uh, pass a message and do the conversion in real time can we do that that is something also we are focused uh, in this track mm -hmm. and one thing i would like to add is that there are currently like four or five different ways people are implementing this uh, they are using the structure map resource um, and which include, which is the fire mapping language. Some people are um, just doing it via tables. Um, and so there are different ways. And if there are people who, you know, are already working for a company that uses a certain method, they are definitely welcome to join the track and use their own method. They don't necessarily. So the, the method that we are going to present um, that Ravi talked about is for people who have absolutely like talked about the, uh, the uh, you know the uh, analysts or the functional people and also anybody who is a programmer but has never done this before so who are totally new to that field but people if they have uh, their own way of doing stuff which they use in their company i mean they can definitely use their own methods as well um nobody's stopping them from doing that and they can use those methods to get out the, the mapping thank you so uh there is a question that comes up right so Suppose I register for a track and I registered for a fire starter track, but uh, I feel that V2 to fire is also interesting, right? Uh, can I manage both the tracks, joining both the tracks and doing it? Or is there some dedicated effort required on this track, which will uh, prevent me from uh, sharing my uh, attention? 
No, actually, so what we plan is we don't have the full detail plan out here right now, but what we are planning to do is on our main day, which is Saturday, we are going to have sections and we are going to tackle different kind of messages in on, on each session. Uh, I mean, session. So we'll have like different sessions. And people, for example, somebody wants to first join the starter track and then, or maybe they first want to join B2 to fire track and then go back to, uh, and then go to the starter track. Maybe there are some advanced topics that, that they want to attend. They can definitely do that because our, um, uh, the, the schedule is going to be very modular and we'll be tackling different kinds of things in different sessions. So there'll be a lot of, uh, so there would not be a dedication required like throughout the day to just have to be in this track. So they can join for one session and then switch to another track for another session. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Amrit, and uh, thank you, Ravi, for the session. So now we open for the questions, uh, if there are any. Uh, I see uh, some of the questions that are already polled, posted on the question panel, and most of them have been answered already. Uh, for the benefit Hi, of Tim. everyone. Uh, yeah, just a So a couple of things people have asked. First, uh, when we register, do we register for a particular track? See, registration is for the entire event. So when you actually register and do the payment, you are actually uh, registering for the whole event. It's up to you which event you want to join. Uh, it's up to your bandwidth. Uh, we suggest you to uh, choose one primary track and if you have a bandwidth if you have if you feel that you can spend more time uh, you are uh, definitely we encourage you to go for more tracks and check out what is happening over there all the tracks will happen in parallel so uh, like fire starter track or any other track so whatever sessions we have they will all happen in parallel but like amrit mentioned similarly in fire starter track we will have scenarios so if you feel that you have done two three scenarios now you want to uh, basically jump on v2 to fire track and want to do something over there you are free so you have to register for the event and you are free to join any of the tracks uh, registration details uh, is are available on the conference page and uh, the fees part is also mentioned over there along with the registration link yeah uh, thanks uh, that's a very good point so one of the questions that comes frequently is i am registering for a track can I, uh, and if I want to register for another track, do I need to pay separately? No. Uh, what you are paying is for the connectathon, not for the tracks. While registering, you choose a primary track, uh, but that track is only for, uh, that choosing is only for logistics purpose. Okay. Uh, you are free to move to any track that you want uh, as your, uh, uh, as your interest is and as you discover more about the tracks so that's not there so you you pay for the event as aditya mentioned and you are free to move around the tracks but the recommendation is go ahead with your the track that you have chosen so that uh, you get the maximum benefit out of it okay uh, one question that came was uh, am i going to receive certificates yeah so you will get a, a participation certificate uh, from HL7 India uh, at the end of the uh, connectathon. So if you participate on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you get the participation certificate. Okay. Uh, then there was a question about uh, how many hours uh, training will be there. So there is no training as such. There is no formal training. Everything is learning by doing. And uh, each of the tracks, uh, details will be published on the confluence page uh, we request you to go and have a look at the confluence so confluence will be the source of truth and it will change very frequently as we are uh, updating it okay and then any other question i, I don't see any other questions here question i may know the name uh, it's malikarjun so uh, malikarjun if you have registered uh, so when the pre connectathon starts as uh, amrit is mentioning so uh, this week and the next week there will be a lot of sessions that uh, the track leads will conduct where they will prep the participants for the connectathon so if you have already registered uh, you will 
you will be involved in the uh, tracks and the preparation you choose your track and then the track leads will get in touch with you and uh, the ball gets rolling and if you have not registered i recommend you to register uh, soon so that you get the benefit of uh, the pre connectathon uh, work as well uh, sure satyam I, I did register today in the morning <laughs> so, hey great congrats thank you uh, any more questions Tuhin, I, I see you have multiple questions. So ha, are all those questions answered? Uh, you have any more questions? Okay. Fine. Uh, we'll uh, wait for a few more minutes. If you have any more questions, we'll answer. Uh, else we'll close the call. Satyam Raj here. Yeah, Raj, go ahead yeah so like uh, how we are handling mu concept in a fire actually currently we used to generate number of reports in our like different system to for meaningful use and mm -hmm. how we are going to handle in a fire resource because i right now what i understand like uh, if we are receiving a fire resource we are going to store uh, store in a fire server and if someone wants they can query our server and they will get the report uh, like a resource back and they can view the data in their system but uh, what about the report generation like currently we are providing like a new three reports uh, to clients okay I, i'll answer that question but i'll see if uh, aditya or vaku uh, if you guys are still there uh, can you take this question uh, sure satam if, if you please repeat it quickly so the question is uh, about the meaningful used reports uh, that get generated mm -hmm. uh, okay uh, what is the mechanism of generating meaningful used reports using fire first thing mu has not basically made it mandatory to use fire mu three criteria is saying that there should be a restful api and fire fits it over there so how people are actually achieving is this using the fire standard api like they are going for davinci profiles in pair provider interaction then they are going for argonet profile uh, for general all the type of various data what you can exchange so like if you go to argonet profile it talks about resources and the apis so how you actually achieve is by uh, re by reaching to a profile level by reaching to a common ground on interoperability so we will exchange patient but these are the restrictions so in us it is more of argonet profile and that's where um, we encourage people to join hls in india one more track which is fire profiling which is meant for specifically to solve indian healthcare interoperability scenarios yeah so that, i mean that, that's pretty much i mean i just just on high level i wanted to uh, yeah. cover yeah thanks aditya so uh, to answer your question and just to add to aditya so first of all this question is a little bit off track to the topic uh, that we are discussing today but just to answer you uh, meaningful use uh, transfers uh, reports and they transfer documents all right so there are certain resources in fire which can uh, uh, do the same thing you can embed cda documents in fire and send it you have the uh, uh, measures uh, measures uh, measure report and measure summary resources which can actually do the same thing that meaningful use wants and send it so there are resources and there are mechanisms through which you can achieve uh, the requirements of uh, meaningful use uh, but again as i said that that does not fall under the purview of this webinar if you want to learn more uh, happy to chat with you uh, one on one offline you can see sure, me sure. on linkedin yeah sure sir sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we are uh, well uh, over hi, time. Sir. Three minutes. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so go ahead. sorry. Uh, just just the last question. Uh, uh, sure. You mentioned about profiling. Uh, are we going to touch upon uh, compliance or conformance to fire standard in 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 this uh, connectathon? Yes. Uh, so uh, I don't know what you mean by compliance and that, but we have uh, we L have a track. Like like we have uh, IT IT profiles and compliance for DICOM, uh, DICOM compliance. 
Okay, so there will be two two separate answers to that. So one is about fire conformance resources. Okay, like the capability statement, the profile, the structure definition, and all those things will be covered in the fire starter track as introductions. Okay, and coming to the fire profiling, right? Uh, like how do you create a specific profile uh, for a specific use case, right? That there is a specific uh, there is a dedicated track for that. That is called fire india profiling track where what we are doing is we are taking the uh, uh, resources that are defined in fire and which are applicable which are recommended for indian context and then we are profiling them for indian use case so that's a subject for our next webinar where we introduce you to the next uh, tracks and that is the uh, fire india profiling track